Jenny Boom Boom, and it's Who Will She Be Talking To Wednesdays, where every single Wednesday I speak to somebody that I just really want to talk to, have a good conversation with, no pressure, just fun, just seeing what everybody's been doing, especially during COVID. And um, I only reveal right when I start this show who I'll be talking to. So thank you so much for joining me uh, because you're going to love tonight's artist. Yep. If you don't already know about this person, you're going to learn a lot about this person tonight. So I think he's already on with me here. Let me just grab him. We can start the conversation. I'm excited. Hi, Chris Fury. Hey, Noid. What's good, Jenny? Hi. Are you? We're, you're like in a dark room there. What's going on there, buddy? <laughs> no, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in the car. You're, I'm in the car. Oh, you're in the car. You're in the car. How are you? I'm great. How are you feeling? I'm great. It's great to see you. I've been I've been watching the growth of the beard during COVID on yeah, Instagram. You see, you see, it's getting in. You know what I'm saying? I'm growing up. I'm growing yeah. up. You like it? Does it? How does it feel? Does it feel good? It's in there. You know, it just it, it just give me that extra confidence I need. You know what I'm saying? It's um, interesting because I don't remember you having that, you know, when we first met, obviously, and you had that baby face. But yeah, like you said, it, things are changing yeah. now, right? You know, now it's different. You know, I'm growing up. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting wiser and older, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm growing a beard. You know, beard gang now. I always wanted a beard though, so you know, the fact that it came in, I'm happy. It looks good on you, and I feel like women always love that anyway. Yeah, they you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a sex symbol, so it's like it, it had biggest sex symbol there is you know like, <laughs> like on people magazine next year you know um, exactly i've been really watching everything that you've been doing during this time because this was a strange time for all of us right right with covid and i mean i, I told someone today that i feel like i'm just now not in shock anymore <laughs> um over yeah. everything and, and how much you know things have changed for us uh but you seem like you kind of just got right in there and started working with this downtime yeah, I mean, you have to. You got to adapt and you got to, you know, when this this whole shit is not set up for us to get comfortable. It's going to throw us off and make us un uncomfortable. And, you know, life is all about, you know, going through things and adapting to the situations that you go through. So I just use this downtime as time to, you know, people on their phones more. So I'm trying to get active on social media. You know, I did the TikTok thing. So I was just trying to, you know, find different creative ways to stay relevant, you know. So what were your, you know, when you sat down and really thought about this, did you set some sort of list of goals that you wanted to obtain during this time while you're not out on the road touring? Because, you know, if you don't know, Annoyed tours a lot. He's always doing shows and traveling right. all the time. Um, so during this time, did you, you know, set some sort of list of goals of things you wanted to accomplish? Um, you know, because COVID threw every, it, it, threw, it, threw, it threw everybody off, you know, so... I don't. I can't say that I made a list because I always had a 2020 list. Like you know, it was to tour. Um, we were supposed to go to um, Europe and go back to Canada. So all of that, all of my list kind of changed as the the year went by. Yeah. You know, and I, my goal was just you know to 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 keep growing my socials and you know get a get get uh 10,000 on TikTok. That was my goal, and I passed that goal in like a couple months. So you know, wow. I did it. You know, congratulations. I spoke to Chris Webby a, a few uh, weeks ago and yeah. Chris, you know, Chris is going crazy uh, <laughs> being in the house. Yeah. He, he needs to get back on the road. Are you feeling the same way? Bro, you know, you listen, you know us, you know, you know, I can't I can't get off of that stage. The stage is my home. That's my yeah. thing. Like, that's my baby. Like, I, I make music to strictly go on the stage and perform it. And I need that 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 to be on the stage in front of the people and get that interaction and see the people smiling and jumping up and down and getting that energy. So I feel like COVID just took that away from me and it, it kind of breaks my heart. I'm kind of going on, like if I don't perform next year, I might be depressed. Like, and this is straight fact. Like I might go into depression because I need the stage. I need it. I just can't. I know that you have a tour planned for 2021. You guys are planning yeah. to get back on the road. Um, do yeah. you know what that tour looks like? Who's going to be on it? Um, right now, honestly, I don't even know, you know, because I know people going to be a little funny on just getting back on the road. You know, some people going to be skeptical and be like, ah, I don't want to be in front of a whole bunch of people right now. So we're going to see who really want. But listen, they could give me the call and I'm on. I'm on. I'm on stage. I don't give a fuck. I'll be on stage with my mask on. I, I'll figure it out. Right. I'll figure, you know, we'll figure it out.
You're so, you know, annoyed when people watch you perform. I've seen you perform so many times now. You're just so incredibly comfortable on stage. I mean, you're really comfortable. Are you nervous at all before you step up on the stage? Hell yeah, of course. I'm always nervous. Like every stage, no <laughs> matter what stage I'm nervous. I, got, I don't know. No, but you're not supposed to show it. Like, that's the thing. Like, I know I love doing what I'm doing because I'm nervous before you go on. Like, you, you're supposed to get nervous before you're doing something you love. You know, it's just to show you that, like, this right here is what you're supposed to be doing. So I get nervous all the time. Like, when I did Hot Jam, I was that was probably the, the most nervous I ever been because there was so many really? people in the crowd. Like, so I was super nervous. But once the beat dropped, and once they say annoyed to the stage and that and you know Santos start playing the joint and they, I'm I'm out there and I, and the nerves go away, it just goes right. away right I mean, right in that split second. Got to mention Santo is on tour with you guys and he does an incredible job of entertaining the crowd and getting them excited for you guys to go on each time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to admit something to you because you know I've been doing radio and, and I've been on stage for a very long time and I still get a little a little nervous. It's always better when you don't think too much about it. You just kind of just get out there because if you're backstage too long, you're just thinking about what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do. It's gonna mess yeah. you all up. <laughs> it's gonna mess you up. You just gotta go. You just gotta go for it, man. The nerves right. is gonna be there. The butterflies is gonna be there, but you know it all goes away once once you get out there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, Black Baby. Um, the video is so incredibly moving. Thank you. Uh, the record is so incredibly moving. Uh, talk to me a little bit about putting that record together. Um, you know, I actually wrote the record uh, February 2019. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty old record, but the situation is always relevant. Like, situations like that are always happening around the world, happening every year, you know? The, the, this shit been going on since before I was even born. You know, so I right, knew, right. I, I knew like this, the, I, I specifically write songs for moments like that. And I hate, I hate that it had to be a moment like that for us to speak out. But the best way I could voice my, my outlook on it is through music. So I'm always speaking about, you know, social injustice and all that. Like I've been doing it since the beginning, you know, since I, since I knew how to rap, like I always wanted to voice my outlook and just I feel like I'm a voice for you know my people of color like obviously so right. I just put I put it together the way I put it together made it relevant to the situation and the times and I put it out and that's what it was shout out to uh my brother 2-4 on the beat and you know we did it and it did what it was supposed to do yeah I, I thought the video was incredibly raw and um yeah. I I really loved it you know yeah. who's baby that, by the way because that baby is darling <laughs> yeah yeah shout out shout out um i, I actually like, did a post oh yeah i did a post on facebook and i don't i don't even know i forgot um her name was kia okay. yeah i just did a, i just did a post on facebook like i need a baby and i needed um the mom in the for a video and it was like i got at least 200 babies and moms you know inboxing so we picked out we had to narrow it down out of like at least 100 so well, that baby is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. beautiful. I yeah. also loved of course, the video for Miss You Much, another video just, I mean, I don't know how, and I've always been um, so interested in how artists, you know, get on a, a video set and they're able to act the way that they are. And the yeah. fact that, you know, it, that was such a believable video between you and that young lady. Mm -hmm. um, and I also loved the hilarious chickens in the house video. I mean, I thought that yeah. It was nice. It was kind of that reminded me of like a uh, when I was growing up a '90s video because a lot of you know videos were just fun, like kind of funny and you know lighthearted mm -hmm. and all of that. So, um, but you've also been doing a lot of freestyles, and yeah. you know that you were just with Flex and did this like incredible freestyle and everybody's talking about it. But when I watch you, you're really one of the best lyrically when it comes to freestyles. I mean, you just Thank hands you. down are. And, you know, I've always been so impressed by folks that can do that because not everyone can. In no. fact, you know, when <laughs> I, I got myself in trouble a few times, you know, in the past, I've been on the radio for 23 years. But, to, you know, when I asked somebody to do that, they would sometimes be like, um, yeah, we ain't doing that today because it's yeah. not really their thing. Um, yeah. You know, when you're there and you're doing that. I'm just curious, what are you thinking about during that process? Um, You know, like this 
how can I put this? That f the freestyle shit is like everybody not built for it. You right. know, and if you and, and if you're not built for it, you you stay a, a, a far far away from it. And I just feel like I've been in the, my mom's basement practicing in the mirror you know, rewriting and writing bars and perfecting my craft for so long that it's just a rush. It's a high when I'm 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 just freestyling. I'm putting the, wherever I'm at, whether I'm on Sway in the morning, I'm on Funk Flex, I'm on LA Leakers, bars on I-95. It's just, it's a high for me because I pride myself in my pen game. Like, I just want to be one of the greatest ever, not just from Connecticut. And I always wanted to, like, get that mindset out of out of my head that I'm like, I don't care about being better than the person down the street or in the next town over. I want to be better than the greatest to ever do it. Like Biggie Smalls, Big L, Tupac, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Like I want to be able to rap after them. And I want them to be able to rap after me and be like, yo, I couldn't keep up with him. You know what I'm saying? And that's I just pride myself on my pen game and being one of the best pens in the world, not just Connecticut, the world. I mean, you are incredibly impressive when it comes to it. That's a lot. For Appreciate Fiend, it. I have to say, too, Justina Valentine, to me, is really one of the best. Yeah, she's incredible. She's incredible. You know, and I think that <laughs> on how good she really is, you know. I yeah. think people are really now uh, realizing that. So I heard that you signed with Chris Webby. Yeah. So what made yeah. you decide to do that? Because... I mean, I know your history a little bit, Annoyed. We've been around each other a long time. There were so many major labels that were really interested in giving you a deal, and you turned yeah. them down. So I'm just wondering yeah. what's your perspective? Um, you know, like, a lot of the label meetings we went to, like, a lot of them, they promised things that they were going to do, and then, you know, it it was just that like it fizzled off. They always say they're gonna do something for you, and they never really do it for you. It's it's a numbers game, you know. Cause when I when I was going up there, my numbers wasn't all the way up. To be totally totally honest, like I wasn't streaming millions of streams, and it was always tough for me to you know you know to make everything balance off. Like I was super dope. Everybody knows I got dope music. Like I'm dope. I'm I I've been I can rap very good, but then some. Right. It didn't translate to the streaming. So it's like, all right, this annoyed is one of the greatest artists that I ever heard before, but his his stream's not doing too well. So we want y'all to just keep working and keep doing your thing. So I always looked at it like, you know what? I'm gonna just get into this situation and learn as much as I can on the ind independent side of it. Cause Webby is a super smart guy. Like he's making so much money, he's doing so much, and nobody even knows it. You know, like he's doing so much on that side. So and I toured with him, so I'm I'm like I'm learning so much, I'm gaining so much knowledge on oh this you could do this and do that, and then okay you could own this much amount of your master and this oh and this over here. So it's like it's so much knowledge that I soaked up, but just being in this situation that when I do obviously I know that this situation is not forever. Like obviously I want to be one of the biggest artists in the world, and right. that's going to take for me for, to branch out and to grow out of the situation. But I feel like right now. I'm growing in this situation because I'm soaking so much knowledge on this game. It's so much that artists don't even know about the analytics and, you know, the, the BMI, the ASCAP, the publishing, you know, the streaming. Like, it's so much that we don't know. We're completely oblivious to it. So it's like now I feel like I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gaining so much, soaking up all of this knowledge from Webby and the people on his team. I'm calling. I'm asking questions like, yo, what does this mean? What it is? What do I have to do in this situation? Just so when I get myself in the next like situations with bigger platforms, I know what I'm worth and I know what I'm supposed to get. And I'm like, oh, y'all not going to kick kick me over and try to shelf me and do some like I know what I'm supposed to do and I know what it takes to get to that next level because I did it independently and I owned most of my shit. So you can't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? The, the interesting thing about this is that, you know, I, I said a story today on the radio where Russ said he's making $100,000 a week as an independent artist. He's actually yeah. better as an independent artist. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you don't need to go with a label. Yeah, maybe. And that's the thing. Like, labels is not really going to be a thing in a couple more years. Like, no, they're not going to be needed. We got social media. We got Instagram. We got, you, you know, we got... Um, 
what's that distro kid we got our own like we got things that we could just upload our own music to we could produce it in our rooms master it in our rooms upload it by ourselves do a video for it on our phone put it up on youtube we really don't need the label part of it because you can just upload it on tiktok it'll go viral some people will see it drake might see it and want you to hop on his next album next thing you know you don't even need a whole label situation like right so you know it all it, it's all it's all in time and labels not even going to be a thing in a, in a in a few years and if if the situation does make sense for me to sign to a big label then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for right now, I'm going to just, you know, stay independent and just keep learning as much as I can. You know, Annoyed, I'm just curious, you know, listening to you talk, when all of that was happening, were you frustrated at all knowing how incredibly talented you are? Absolutely. And folks were getting these deals that were not as talented as you may be, but it was more of a, like a gimmick? Absolutely. It was incredibly frustrating because I know I was, I know my music is dope. Like, I know I got some of the greatest music ever because I was in my room listening to this shit. I'm like, yo, this shit is, people are really giving me their initial reaction to it. Like, yo, this song is amazing. Why aren't you bigger than what you are? Right. And it's just, you know, it just, it, it was it was incredibly frustrating. Just like, yo, I know I deserve to be one of the biggest artists, but I knew that it takes time. It just takes time. Everything takes time. If it, And if it's not my time, it's not my time. Because the worst thing I would do is get myself in a situation and be good for like a year. And then next thing you know, I'm just, oh, he's done now. We don't want to hear no more noise. He was hot for a year. He made so much money, but he's fizzled down. So I'd rather just take the long way to get there and stay there for at least 10, 20, 30 years than just get there in one year and just be, it's, it, didn't, it didn't happen. You know, right. and, that's, and, and, that's yeah, and, and, a lot of artists, they come and go. Yeah, a lot of artists, and you'll say, "Wow, where's that person? I haven't heard anything from that person." You know, um, yeah. you know, has your process for you? Have you felt like this? The process has been a good thing, the way it's been going. I mean, do you feel happy with it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do anything different. I don't regret anything. So I'm happy with how everything happened and how, you know, the situations I went through. I cried. I've been frustrated. Slammed my phone. Said I quit been through every friggin' emotion just like nipsey said he went through every emotion and felt everything so i didn't i didn't feel every emotion that you i didn't feel happy sad wanted to cry wanted to cr nobody sees this part when i get in the house i'm crying i'm like yo why the fuck is it taking it so long i'm sitting here broke i don't got no money in my bank account i'm doing this shit i'm like yo i want to all right i just want to sell drugs fuck it i'm gonna just i'm, I'm thinking about everything that i want to do because it's like why aren't i there yet but i always just you know, just thought about it like, yo, everything take time. It took Kendrick so many years to get where he at. It took J. Cole like 10 just to get where. So I know it's going to take time. And I'm only like four or five years into this shit. Not even. I'm probably only four. Just seriously, since 2015. So I guess five, you can say. And I still got a long way to go. So this is this whole journey is not an overnight thing. And some people get it overnight. And you may think it was overnight, but sometimes... It's definitely not overnight. Like, they definitely got the machine behind them. They got the extra dollars, and they probably been doing this shit for, like, three years, and they did just got... It just happens like that. And some people do get it the overnight way, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen the same way for you. And if it happens for you that way, it probably shouldn't ever happen for you that way. So just take it the way you're going to take it, man. Like, if, if it takes me this long to get where I got to get to, just to be happy with my career and be there for, like, 20, 30 years, then so be it. I'm going to just... I'm I'm smooth sailing. Yep, patience is key. Yep, that's what somebody said. Patience is key. Patience is key. And you know, I will say, um, you know, being in kind of the same situation, you know, on the radio, there are times that, you know, in the past things have gotten a little tough and you're thinking, yeah. well, shoot, maybe I could go get a job or whatever, but it's hard because everybody knows you're annoyed. Yeah, exactly. Like, that job they're gonna be like oh so we ain't doing music anymore they're recognizing you you know i i understand that thank you jenny I'm, you're saying everything that i used to be thinking about i'm like yo i'm telling my mom i can't work at home depot i can't work at walmart like i can't sit here and sacrifice my image for money right like and that's what people don't understand i'm ho i'm held up to this to the standard of like yo annoy got money and i'm dead broke like, I was right. dead broke. Like, I didn't have no money, but they're holding you up here, so you got to hold that image. So if they see you at Walmart, and all, oh, yeah, no, he fell off. You can't, I can't do that. 
I have to make sacrifices. So I have to be broke for a certain amount of time. Yes. That's why you got to have a great support system because some people fall like, yo, I got to, I got, I need money. That's why people just sell drugs or fall. They, they, they fall victim to the, to what they've been through and what they know. But it's like, this shit is, this shit, man, this shit ain't designed to, to, to be successful. That's why so many people aren't successful because it's not right. designed for you to be easy. This is not supposed to be an easy task. It's supposed right. to be tough. That's why I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to take the easy way out. I'm going to just keep grinding, keep my feet in the mud. I'm going I'm to be sad. I'm going to be mad. But I know for a fact that this shit is going to pay off. It has to because it's written in my book that it has to happen. Like, so. And you've worked happen. hard for it. And I, and I really respect you so much for that. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of artists, they, for some reason, I don't know, they piss it away. And it's like, yeah. it's kind of annoying, you know, when yeah. you see so many other people that really deserve that spot. So I really, you know, hope everything works out for you. I really do. I appreciate it. You know, but, like you're on your way and, and you're dropping a ton of music. And in fact, I'm finding out that you're dropping music like every two weeks moving forward. Is that what's yeah. the plan yep. here? Yep. 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 We got a record dropping on the 17th. And then we got a we got a I done shot a video with Webby. I'm about to shoot another video in the next few weeks. So I'm I'm about to get the content back geared up and you know I'm staying in everybody's face because I know I'm I'm so talented that I know for a fact that out of these batches of songs that I got, I know at least one of them gonna get a million or two million. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just designed yeah. for me to be successful and just to get my numbers up. And that's all I'm worried about. Get my numbers up, make things make sense, make the fans happy get some merchandise right, all that shit, and just, you know, do what I and love doing. You have your own production now, too, which is incredible. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, I, know I, think... you, I know you have your producers. You love working with Static Selecta. I, yeah. I know you incredibly talented him for a very long time. Um, but now you're doing your own production. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. You know, I dabble into the Fruity Loops a little bit, you know, um, I just know what I want to hear. Like some days I may want to do some shit that and no producer knows what's in my head. So I kind of just got to get that idea out of there myself. And then I give it to the producer in here, put his little one, two on it, or, you know, change the snare, change the drum, add more to it. So it's just, you know, you have to, you just grow as, you grow as an artist and then you start to tap into different things that you can, that you didn't know you was capable of doing. Like, and I didn't know I was going to be capable of making a beat or, producing but you know it happened that way so that's dope yeah. and i know that you know, your significant other is also incredibly talented cynthia so i know that y'all probably can you know collaborate a little bit on things too because she's so incredibly talented as well yeah no doubt yeah. i'm a big fan of hers so you've had some major cosigns um, what was your favorite cosign that came in like what was the one that you were like wow that person mentions me that person is a fan of mine Mm-hmm. Um, Joey Badass. Mm, the, good one. Yeah, I seen him at uh Static's uh birthday party in New York, and um once I once once I bumped into him, he was like, "Oh, that's annoyed." I'm like, what? "How do you know who I am before I'm even walking up to you?" So it's like, you know, he's he's been a fan, you know, since he was like, "Y'all been a fan," and that was just like, I'm like. In disbelief, like bro, that's Joey Badass. Come on now, like I've been yeah. listening to you for mad for for years, and you know Ghostface, Ghostface Killer. Uh, come on now, that legendary shit. Uh, Pete Rock, come on, like legends, man. Like legends is tapping in and just realizing like what this is, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm pretty sure w- make way more artists know who I am. They probably don't. They don't have to say it, but I'm pretty right. sure they know. They know they know what this is. Like I don't they don't, they don't have to say it, but they know what this is. Now they're putting together a Woo Block album. I know that. So maybe you can uh, you know, try to finagle your way over into that situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna do what I can do, you know, I'm in DMs and you know, we in the work, so I'm gonna definitely make I'm gonna make some shake out of something. I'm a hustler, so I'm gonna figure it out. Well, I'm happy for you, Annoyed. I mean, I know, like I said, this time has got to be nuts for you because you're always on the road. You're always on the road. Y'all are traveling and just always moving from state to state or country to country. Um, you know, but I feel like you've really used this time to perfect your craft. And, you know, lyrically, you said earlier, you know, you matured, but lyrically you have matured, you yeah, know, thanks. and um, thing. 
you know, when you get better with age. Yeah, you know, and I'm definitely growing. The pen is growing as I'm growing. So, you know, who knows? In the next couple of years, I'll be talking totally different than I am right now. So, mm. you Well, know? you already have changed a lot, just being honest. From the first time that I interviewed you, I remember our first interview. And yeah. I very, you were very raw. <laughs> yeah. And, and even up to now, you're, um, you know, you're just really know who you are. And that's a great thing. That's love. Thank you. I'm glad you see the growth. And that's all that I wanted to see. Like, that's enough for me right there. Just to pe just for you to know the growth from then to now, just to see the growth and, you know, the way I speak and just, it's just, it's just beautiful, man. Thank you, Jenny. You always, you know, always been a huge supporter of me. And I just want to let you know that. I want you I'm to do, go out into the world and don't forget about Connecticut, okay? Come on. How am I going to forget? <laughs> don't forget about Connecticut, man. You already know I'm here. Come on no. now. Everywhere like, with me. Here and all of a sudden they don't know about us anymore. I don't know. But. That's not that, that's not even me because every every platform I'm on, you know, I'm screaming. Oh. And it's proof. The proof is in the pudding. It's on you. Like, check it. Everywhere I'm going, they know where I'm from. You don't never got to worry about that. All right. So we're going to look for the new music. They're, it's dropping Tuesdays, right? Yeah, I'll be every every other Tuesday. We got we got music dropping. So just check, you know, tap in with the Instagram. You know, follow me on Spotify, Apple Music, all of that good stuff. I got dope music on the way, some of my best music. And we starting off 2021 real right. I got so much music. For, I'm probably already done musically for 2021 because I got everything geared up. So just keep, just stay tuned in with me, man. I got so much beautiful music and I can't wait to put it out. I've been holding music for like three, four years now. I got old songs that's like four years old that's still going to come out next year. And they still sound brand new because, you know, I'm always elevating. So my old shit sound like new shit to everybody else. So, you know? That's dope. And, and yeah. oh, by the way, congratulations, too. You bought a house. Yeah, exactly. And that is an accomplishment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jenny. You know, I'm just, we're just growing up, you know? as You got to grow up and you got to do grown people things. And yeah. that's one of them. Yeah, that was really, uh, for me... It made me feel so happy when I was able to finally do that. It took me a little while because I had bad, messed up credit. But once yeah. I was able to do it, it made me feel so happy. So when I got to see that you did it as well, I just felt so happy for you. Appreciate it, Jenny. Thank you so much. All right, Inouye. Well, thank you so much for joining me. No, thank you for having me. You know, I'm always here. Whenever you want to do this again, we can do it. All right. Well, we're going to be talking again with all this new music coming out and everything else yeah. you got going on. So take care. Tell Cynthia I said he a hello, okay? All right. I got you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> I just love Annoyed. Okay. So if you missed any part of our interview just now, uh, go to my Instagram. It's going to be posted in like two seconds. And of course, I'm on my YouTube uh, at Jenny Boom Boom TV, okay? Thank you so much for joining me for who will should be talking to Wednesdays. It's every single Wednesday. I do this. I, I love it. I ask somebody that I really want to talk to to come on with me and just have a conversation. It's just a lot of fun. So I mean, it's so fun to just handpick who I want to talk to. I just love it. So anyway, we're going to be doing it again next Wednesday. And don't forget, every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we do Small Business Tuesdays, where I talk to small businesses in the area. Uh, last night, I had three small businesses on. I had uh, Bergen House. I also had um, a slumber party, uh, oh, Camp Fly slumber party uh, service on there, too. Um, and also, oh, my God. Gosh, who was the person? Oh, oh, Sakharopoulos. Yeah. So make sure and check out everything that happened last night. And of course, Tuesday at seven, we'll do it again. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Okay. Bye-bye.